Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome to something just a little bit different. This Nintendo eShop summer sale is going on, and people are going crazy! <laughs> Myself included, honestly. So I thought that I'd take a look at some of the more bargain bin sort of games. One's under $10, we've got five $1 games, five $5 games, and five games that are under $10. Of course, there are way more than just 15 games in this eShop sale. I'll probably look at the offerings that they have at the end and talk a little bit about the ones that I decided to skip over. But yeah, these picks are definitely my five favorites. I basically wanted to talk more about the low-cost games, largely because these indie titles don't generally get enough love, at least in my opinion. Everybody talks about the Nintendo first-party stuff. Should you get Splatoon? Should you get <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey from the sale? I mean, yeah, of course you should. But these are some other games to consider for when you've dwindled your bank account down to its last few dollars and you're like, hmm, <laughs> should I get two $5 games or one $10 game? Well, I'm here to help you out with that. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and jump right into the Switch eShop deals. I will get to back to Fanatical and Humble Bundle Steam game bundles, but I'm really excited to cover these. So let's see how it goes. In the $1 category, the absolute bargain bin, our first game up is Downwell. Oh my god, I've loved Downwell for the longest time, and it translates beautifully to the Switch. Even at full price, only $3, it is a worthy game to add to your collection. You basically just fall down a linear path and shoot at enemies with your gun boots, and you can reload by either landing on a platform or landing on an enemy's head and then you shoot your gun boots some more until you're out of ammo again. When you reach the end of the level, you get to snag an upgrade. You can also find upgrades in shops, and trust me, you will need all of the upgrades that you can get because this game gets devilishly hard only a few levels in. You can sit and just play it casually, like I do, or you can aim to rank on the leaderboards. Downwell is a fantastically made game that's not going anywhere anytime soon. Downwell is eternal. Squidlet, admittedly probably the weakest of these $1 picks. I was over and done with Squidlet in 30 minutes flat. The journey's fun enough, and a dollar ain't that much for a ticket to ride as many times as you want. With a Game Boy aesthetic and purposefully quirky humor, I thought it'd make a great game for my nine-year-old. Well, she got the hang of it and beat it within a day or so, so now it just kind of sits there. It's still a simple, decent platformer for when you're just staring at your library and kind of unsure what to play. Got a half hour to spare? Eh, why not beat Squidlet again? <laughs> the puzzles are simple, the enemies are relatively easy, the boss fights, I do admit that there are a couple good ones in there. But yeah, if you want a game that won't tax you too hard, then check out Squidlet. Flashback! Cult classic retro cinematic platformer, ooh. If you haven't given it a try, it's certainly worth a spin. It even has a modernized version. If you're one of those youngins that can't appreciate 16-bit graphics. I love Flashback largely because it, well, takes me back. Back to a time when games would eviscerate you for not looking before you leap. In the original game, that would equal an immediate loss of progress and a return to the latest save point. In this 2018 re-release, you get the option to rewind your progress to a point before your fatal mistake. But don't do that. Play it the way it was meant to be played, and get good. The Way, a Kickstarter game that attempted to recapture the magic of platformers like the aforementioned flashback. How did it go? Eh, decently. The story is the main reason to stay invested here. The controls can be a little bit, mm, fiddly? But the amazing artwork fantastic soundtrack and unforgiving nature of this game is what keeps me pushing forward. It's a very slow and cerebral kind of game that you can just sit and play while staring at the stars and drinking a beer and pondering the reason that we exist on this planet. To make crappy YouTube videos? Mm, probably. <laughs> Astro Bears. Remember Slither.io? Well, this is like that, except instead of being a snake, you're a bear that's constantly shitting toothpaste all over a tiny planetoid. It's a stupid game. A literal mini-game. But my kids seem to really enjoy it. There are four characters with varying stats, and that's about the only change-up. To me, it feels more like a tech demo, but I guess I'll play it for the bonding experience. 
Definitely do not pay full price for this thing. But for a buck? Eh, I don't know. It might make a good drinking game. They can drink chocolate milk, I'll drink whiskey. At least that might manage to make the game more interesting to me. If you only have one dollar, definitely get down well. Flashback would come next, and then the way. Astro Bears and Squidlet bring up the rear in the one dollar tier. Things really start to open up in the five dollar games. So that's what we're gonna take a look at next. Five dollars or under. God, there's just so much good stuff. I guess we'll start with Transistor. It's a four dollar game. Cyberpunk action RPG with a mysterious and somber atmosphere. It's relatively linear, but the gameplay has more depth than you'd assume at first glance. Use abilities called functions to chain attacks together for massive combos and experiment to find what works best for you. The unconventional storytelling, the deceptively deep combat, the amazing setting. Transistor is an amazing Switch experience for someone seeking a new RPG or just someone that enjoys a good story. Transistor comes from Supergiant Games who also made Bastion, which is another fucking fantastic RPG that's only $3 right now. Oh, too many good games to fit in. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that one real quick. Don't Starve for $4.99. Procedurally generated survival crafting with a Tim Burton kind of art style. Hmm, this is definitely one that you won't want to miss out on. Plenty of people I know have played it already, but there are also plenty who haven't. For those who haven't, the experience can be punishing, but from the first time you boot it up to the next and the next, you'll feel yourself growing, surviving longer, experiencing more hardships, considering how to overcome them. I consider myself somewhat of a don't starve aficionado on Steam, but now I can take it portable? Oh, <laughs> yeah. If it came with multiplayer, my brain would probably explode from awesomeness, but it doesn't. So the only thing that exploded were my testicles, a little bit, in my pants. We'll follow up Don't Starve with another clay entertainment game, and that is Mark of the Ninja. Ooh, for $4.99, this is a great one to pick up. What makes it so great, Dayton? Well, this is the stealth platformer that all other stealth platformers are measured against. Mark of the Ninja is almost a decade old, but you can tell that it's Asian because it still doesn't look like this thing is aged at all. You could tell me that this was released yesterday, and if I didn't know better, I'd believe you in an instant. It's just so well done. Vision cones are clearly displayed. You can see guards' footfalls. The game feels extremely fair, so if you lose, it's all on you. But if you win, oh, feel free to soak in the success. You guys might know that I have a slight boner for ninjas, and I think Mark of the Ninja is what started it all. Masters of Anima for $3.50. Another fantastic experience that I don't see many people talking about. Probably because of the failings related to the story and the voice acting. But the gameplay is what really made me unable to put this one down. Battle is largely done by summoning minions. The boss fights can be difficult and the game doesn't hold your hand but you probably already know that I enjoy a game that isn't scared to kick you in the dick a time or two. Succeeding on the first try is certainly possible, and if you manage it, give yourself a hearty pat on the back because you earned that. I really enjoy summoning different minions to do combat for you, and when you get a new one, it's just such a great feeling. It kept me hooked all the way through. The storyline is lacking, but I'd say that Masters of Anima, especially for 350, dude, gah, it's at least worth a look. Heave Ho for $4.99. I don't want this section to be 100% single player titles, so our last slot is gonna go to Heave Ho. A simple game that was executed well enough to take the gaming world by storm. There are a ton of great multiplayer titles on the Switch, like Snipper Clips, but few supply as much chaos and action as Heave Ho does. While most of Snipper Clips was me talking to player two and trying to get them to understand what we needed to do, or them pitching their idea to me, Heave Ho is more of a game that just throws you in there <laughs> and says, see if it'll work. And I definitely prefer that. The levels are designed well, and the fact that you can pull literally anyone in on the fun, no matter where you are, is just too fantastic for words. Did I enjoy Heave Ho on Steam? Yes, surely, definitely. But the Steam version can't possibly compete with the magic of those detachable Joy-Cons. Ugh, bless the Switch. <laughs> As far as what you should get here above other things, oh god, Mark of the Ninja would probably be my top pick, followed closely by Don't Starve, 
Then we've got Transistor slash Bastion. <laughs> uh, Heave Ho after that. Masters of Anima bringing up the rear. But still don't sleep on Masters of Anima. It's really good, okay? I promise. <laughs> And with that, let's dive into the $10 games, the last stretch of the video, except where I go through and dig through all the games and go, oh, I didn't talk about that one, it's awesome, which is probably gonna be the majority of this video anyways. It's a new concept, it's a, it's a thing we're trying. We're, we're gonna work the bugs out, <laughs> eventually. So the first game under $10 that I have to talk about, there is no choice in the matter, is the Hotline Miami Collection for $8.74. Oh. This is the game that made me start on YouTube. Ah, we meet again, old friend. I was actually designing a Hotline Miami decal to cover my Switch with, so... You know I gotta get this game. I'm pretty sad that Hotline 2 lacks the level editor that the PC version has, but I gotta be extremely grateful to get my portable dose of ultraviolence anywhere I go. Amazing soundtrack, tight gameplay, and an art style that manages to be disturbingly ugly and strikingly beautiful all at the same time. Much like the multitude of crushed brains and skulls that you'll leave in your wake. God damn. Hotline Miami is another game that has not aged a day. The twitchy gameplay has kept me coming back for almost a decade, and without the shadow of a doubt, I will continue to do so. Assault Android Cactus for $9.99. Nine adorable playable characters, all with different abilities, are thrown into a fantastic bullet hell, where you'll need to fight your way towards batteries in order to keep yourself charged up and battle ready. The boss fights are a real treat in this game, and bringing a friend along is, of course, the greatest thing ever. I really like the art style and the execution of Assault Android Cactus. My wife, who's a big fan of action-packed titles, used to love this game, like, a lot. But that was all before she discovered Killing Floor 2. And now all she plays is Killing Floor 2. As soon as Killing Floor 2 comes to the Switch, <laughs> I'll let you know. Next up we've got Wargroove for $9.99. Oh god. I'll say first that Advance Wars is probably the one franchise that made me truly realize how much I'm capable of enjoying a strategy title. Before that, I assumed strategy games were reserved for big brain tryhards. While well, Wargroove took the great framework of Advance Wars and covered it with a fresh coat of fantasy paint. Knights and archers are much more interesting to me than just a guy with a machine gun, so it's no wonder that Wargroove stuck with me so well. It was on my 2019 best indie games list, and now I can get it on the Switch for just $10? Fucking sold! This game definitely didn't make as many waves as I expected, so I don't know who has played it or who hasn't, but if you haven't played it on Steam, or even if you have, <laughs> you should probably pick it up for some amazing portable tactical action on the Switch. Katamari Damacy Reroll for $9.89. Remember when I talked about the amazing soundtrack in Hotline Miami? Well, yeah, this game also has an amazing soundtrack, although it is kind of a different color. It's much more upbeat and happy, and it's catchier than Hotline Miami by a long shot, but the music isn't all that there is to love. You play as the Prince of the Stars, and you roll up progressively larger items to create a ball. Kind of like a dung beetle simulator, but instead of rolling literal shit around, it's figurative shit, like pins and pencils and badges and erasers and anything else you can think of. You have to avoid wildlife, like snails and cats, and you have to navigate extremely small spaces like the top of a ledge or a dresser, but once you master it, it is just so satisfying to sit down and, and roll around this giant ball of crap. <laughs> Katamari Damacy is consistently relaxing as well as rewarding, and to me it's no surprise that 14 years after its release, Katamari is still rolling along with the same persistence. Okami, the classic Okami, has been released time and time again on almost every single platform. I've talked about it before, probably more than once actually, and I'm gonna continue talking about it, because it's seriously just fantastic. If you haven't played it yet, I can only ask, why? It's a better adventure game than Legend of Zelda. I'm serious, I will fight you on this. <laughs> it's not a weeb game. It's not furry bait. It's a legitimately fantastic experience that seems to get slept on time and time again. Come on! There are so many components here to love. Mythology, puzzling, platforming, the art style. Oh my god, that timeless art style. Please, please play this. 
or else I'm just gonna have to keep bringing it up. As far as which games to pick up, if you only have $10, god that's hard. <laughs> I'd say a lot of that depends on what you've played before, you know. If you played Hotline Miami on the PC, it is an objectively better version, but do you want Hotline Miami Portable? Probably pick that up. I would put Hotline at the top of the list personally, just because I love the series that much. Wargroove would probably come after that. And then Okami, Katamari, and Assault Android Cactus. But all of these games are just so good. Oh, absolutely worth experiencing. I'm, I'm just blown away with the amount of good deals that they have here. So with my personal list out of the way, let's head over to Deku Deals, which is infinitely easier to navigate than the Nintendo Switch eShop. And we'll take a look at some of the, the good stuff they got over there. Oh my god, right off the bat, hitting me with Nino Kuni for $20. Dude, it's on my wish list too. Oh, I gotta get it. <laughs> Firewatch is also there for only $6. I mean, Firewatch is kind of played out, but it is a nice walking simulator with some, some fine characters in it. Taiko no Tatsujin, if you got the, the drum and beat in your heart, you can pick that up for $15 which is quite a steal. Maybe you also get the little like Hori drum set, although I don't think that's on sale currently, but still you can pick it up pretty cheap. Dragon Quest 11, you save 30% on that, 42 bucks. That might still seem a little bit pricey, but given the amount of hours that you could possibly put into Dragon Quest 11, <laughs> you could talk me right into it. Oh, Celeste, I didn't see Celeste before. It is 66% off, $7 can get you Celeste, and that is some hardcore platforming. Skyrim is half price, but I probably wouldn't bother with that. Blasphemous, fantastic Metroidvania. Ukulele also half price. It's pretty nice. My Time at Porsche, that's actually a really nice game. Considering the Switch has Stardew Valley on it, I don't know how many people would actually sit down to play My Time at Porsche, but it is it is kind of decent Stardew Valley-like. Resident Evil's half off. Cat Quest, why is this on my wish list? This shouldn't be on my wish list. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. You stay there for now. Steam World. Oh my god, the Steam World games are so good. One and two and heist. They're all fucking fantastic. 75% off. I probably should have put that in the $5 tier as well. That is really, really nice. Got Wander Song if you want to be a bard. Only $8. God damn. Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. Oh, I missed this in the $10 tier. It's too good. <laughs> oh, tasty, tasty. Wizard of Legend is also pretty alright. Monster Boy, I do currently have it, and it is fucking mint. Unfortunately, I am plowing through it rather quickly, but for only $18, I can't be too mad at it. The Messenger for $10. God. Again, got it on Steam, but it would just be so good to play portable. <laughs> Runner 3. I do have Runner 3. That is a really good one to pick up for only a buck 39. My god. If you're in, into an endless runner, if you have some people to play multiplayer with, definitely consider getting Runner 3. Yoku's Island Express. Oh my god, that's super good too. It's like pinball platforming. Wow. For for 680, I'm going to heavily consider that one as well. I'm going to be so poor by the end of this, you guys. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, ooh, 30% off, that's really nice. Can't find a physical copy, although I would prefer to get it as a physical copy. Castlevania Anniversary Collection, oh, all the Castlevania games for only $10? Mmm, you could talk me into that. Far Lone Sales, oh my god, what an atmospheric and beautiful game about driving a land ship across the desert and like you have to monitor its systems and sometimes there's an obstacle you got to get out pick up some different upgrades stuff like that i really enjoyed my time with far loan sales nine dollars i i would definitely consider it god damn dead cells is a good one Whew. it's not on extremely heavy discount but there's good reason for that <laughs> it's like the definitive roguelite. When they came to me, they offered me a key for Dead Cells. I did not expect it to be as big as it was. Submerge is actually probably pretty worth it for a buck fifty. I mean, it's a short game, but you get to explore a post-apocalyptic world, experience a good story. I'd say consider it. Among the Sleep Enhanced Edition for seven fifty. I really did enjoy Among the Sleep a whole heck of a lot for seven fifty. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I don't know if it would actually be made better as a portable game. Among the Sleep seems like one of those stories where you like kind of isolate yourself and put your headphones on, you know. I don't think the game is going to have the same effect if you're sitting in the middle of a fucking bus station. <laughs> but still it ain't bad. 
Serial Cleaner, super cool for a buck fifty. I already picked that one up. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. You'd think that this is a great deal. You're like, oh, twelve fifty. That's fucking awesome. But there's so much DLC attached that uh, I'm not too sure. Not too sure about that, boss. Kingdom New Lands is pretty nice for three seventy five. Mm, what else we got here? N plus plus. Damn, it's still ten fifty. This game has been out forever, but uh, it might be worth the ten fifty. It's a really sweet game if you enjoy that like puzzly platformy collect a bunch of shit and get to the exit type of levels. It's a bite sized game. You know what I mean? Play it on your smoke break for five minutes and then put it back down. It's really nice. Screen cheat for two sixty. That's pretty sweet, especially considering the multiplayer aspect of the Switch. Death Road to Canada. I mean. It's pretty sick, honestly. <laughs> I have it on Steam, but I'd like to have it on Switch as well because the scenarios are just like, you know, bite-sized and then you finish that up and put it down and it's just, it feels like it was made for the Switch. And there's lots of scenarios to go through. The, the replayability is really there for $7.50. Frame collection's pretty cool for $4. Neurovoider for only 6 bucks. You should definitely check out Neurovoider. That's a good one. Garfield Cart. Garfield Cart? <laughs> Why do you fucking haunt me? <laughs> what is this? Oh, don't do it. Don't ever do it, please. In life, do not. 88 Heroes, the 98 Heroes Edition. This is a game that I keep picking up on Steam. I've owned it for years and years, and every so often, it tickles the back of my brain, and it's just like, hey, do you want to make another run in 88 Heroes? Yeah, I definitely do. Here, it's $6. I mean, pfft, $6, dude. If you like playing with, like, bootleg heroes that don't do anything useful, <laughs> at least a lot of them, then uh, check out 88 Heroes. It's pretty cool. Reigns, King and Queens. Do you like swiping cards left and right? Go for it. Go for it. And then here's where uh, the fucking <laughs> page broke. <laughs> but I see World of Goo. That's a pretty good one. I see, uh, <laughs> Broken Age, that's decent. I can't see the price of it, though. Wilmot's Warehouse. Oh, Wilmot's Warehouse! It's free if you have, uh, the Humble Trove. But, goddamn. That is tasty. That is tasty. There's just too many deals. Too many deals, it broke the page, so... I guess I'm gonna call it. This is probably gonna be a long-ass video anyways. You guys are tired of hearing me talk about this. Especially if you ain't got a Switch, goddamn. But anyways, friends, I do hope that you enjoyed the video, at least on some level. And if you did, I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. Check out our links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon, giving away Bioshock the Collection on Discord. Super fantastic. And as always, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons for helping me live the dream. Nico the Legend, Lady Nix, Radimus Cisco, Damon Darkstar, and Crimson Albedo. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I appreciate the rest of you too for listening along with me. Especially since this video is so fucking beefy. <laughs> but we'll be back again tomorrow with, uh, I think a Humble. It's like Humble Codemasters bundle or something like that. Fanatical still on the back burner. I've got the Untamed bundle written. I just need to, uh, make a space and get it recorded and do all the things that I'm supposed to do and, and apparently not very good at doing. So, <laughs> I appreciate your patience. I'll bring it to you soon, I promise. But anyways, friends, this has been Bundle Banter. No, not really. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too much of a mess, although it probably was. <laughs> I just hope you'll let me know how terrible or how great or, or what I should do next time. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one, friends. And until then, Bye-bye.